Howdy folks, so today I've got something a little different for you. Uh, this is a Copal model 227 flip clock, and uh, this stems from late 60s, early 70s. I don't entirely know the date uh, this was manufactured. But uh, flip clocks, um, for those that don't know, uh, these were a very popular way of building clocks back then because, of course, you didn't have LEDs really that were uh, you know, high enough power and bright enough to be seen uh, at a distance or to make large enough digits. You know, this is back when bubble display calculators were a thing and you had to actually put little magnifying glasses on the seven segment displays because they were so tiny you couldn't read them. So of course it wouldn't make for a very good clock. And uh, things like LCDs didn't exist. Uh, pretty much CRTs are what you use to display stuff. And of course CRTs are analog. You can't really display digital numbers on them without uh, quite a bit of complex circuitry which really wasn't feasible at the time. So we had Nixie tubes, but they were prohibitively inexpensive, or expensive, sorry. Uh, you really couldn't build a clock with Nixie tubes just because of um, how costly they were. They were really reserved for really expensive uh, test equipment and that kind of stuff. So the flip clock was kind of a, a, a very, you know, short-lived uh, technology to sort of solve this problem. And it's done mechanically. Um, there's, there's basically, there's a synchronous motor in here, which uh, constantly spins, and there's gear reduction. And uh, basically, there are little tiles which uh, flip over, and they have the digits printed on them. And it just as as it constantly spins, uh, it flips through all of the uh, the digits. And some of these have you know like day of the week and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but this one is very simple. It just has the hour and the minute. This one is in a in a twelve hour format. And this one has an alarm buzzer as well. And uh, I, I always really like these. Um, they, they're just, they're cool. I mean, mechanical stuff like this is really interesting. I mean, it's fully obsolete technology, but I just love this kind of stuff. So I picked this up. Uh, it's actually in excellent condition. The window is plastic, but it's not scratched, and I really like this. And this thing, this thing is really cute because it's very small. Mostly these things came in like clock radios, but there is no radio function to this. This is just a clock. And so for uh, like scale, um, it's, it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty small. And uh, Copal, if you're not familiar with this company, they're a Japanese company, and uh, they, they, they made a lot of these flip clock mechanisms. Uh, in fact, a lot of the Japanese manufacturers of like the clock radios uh, didn't make the mechanisms themselves. They bought them from Copal. So for example, if you have like a Panasonic flip clock, which is Japanese, chances are it's got a Copal mechanism in it. Um, and one easy way to tell is the motor has this symbol on it. It's like basically just a piece of tape. Well, when I take this apart, we'll see. Um, this symbol wrapped around the motor. And uh, Copal, of course, put this little window so you could see the motor go around, but all the other companies didn't didn't bother with the window. But if you take it apart and you see that on the motor, you can you can tell who made it. So this thing, it's just got a like a very simple alarm function. And it's got, this is the, kind of like the, the alarm set, and then this is the alarm off. So this is, I guess, kind of the snooze button, I guess. It's got its nice wood grain. It's just uh, mains in, of course. There's a um, there's actually no speaker in this. The the um, the alarm is actually, as we'll see, um, it's a it's it's done a little bit differently. It's a little bit more mechanical. Um, and here's the nameplate uh, for anyone interested. Um, so you know it's not very efficient. It's six watts, of course, because uh, it's got that synchronous motor. But and they made these in tw uh, you know they made these in 24 hour models and everything uh, as well. Now, the reason why I'm making the video today about this is because, of course, uh, these things were not, uh, the, the big downside of these, of course, is you couldn't see them at night because they had no form of illumination in them. And so the way that they solved this is there's actually a, a light bulb uh, at the bottom here. And of course, regular light bulbs would be too bright and they wouldn't last so long. So uh, most of these clocks used neon lamps. And the problem with neons, of course, is uh, the electrodes sputter uh, over time and uh, they deposit metal on the inside of the glass and they get really dim and sometimes they won't even strike at all. And this, uh, the neon that's in this is dead. So um, you can't see this in the dark. So I've went out and uh, I, ordered, um, I ordered two, because I ordered two of everything. But I ordered just some, I think these are 95 volt I'd have to check the data sheet, but these are just 95 volt uh, neon tubes. And uh, so I'm just going to be replacing the neon in this um, and also replacing the resistor just as a matter of course, because of course the resistors sometimes get quite hot in these. And uh, this will probably be a carbon film resistor, so it might be a little high, so I might replace it. I'll replace it with a metal film one anyway. And that just sits under there, but we'll see that in just a moment. 
Other than that, that's the only thing that's really wrong with this thing. Uh, these things really, they kind of go forever. The motors don't even have bearings in them. They're just, uh, they're just bushings. So here it is apart. Um, to take this thing apart, you've just, you've got to take the, the, um, sort of alarm handle off. You gotta take the knobs off. Um, there's two knobs, one for the, uh, alarm, one for actually time setting. And then, uh, then it's got clips on it. You know, we talk about all the new stuff that's made with clips, but there are clips on this. Um, it's kind of interesting how this window's done. I'm not entirely sure. It looks almost like there's a piece of fabric that they've like glued on the inside of the, that's probably what that is. It's just, it's hard. So it's probably like, you know, laced with epoxy or something. I don't know. Just a, it's just a very generic plastic case. Uh, and then it's just got the raw mechanism inside. And so this, this thing on the end, this is the synchronous motor. And like I said, it's got that tape on the outside and this is an easy way to spot if it's a couple mechanism is if, if it's got that tape on there. Um, so this is their own motor. Uh, these are just synchronous motors. So the way these things work is unlike most modern uh, digital clocks, which they use a quartz crystal, right? Quartz is a, a mineral. It's got this wonderful piezoelectric property where if you deform it physically, like you, you hit it with a hammer, it will um, generate a small electrical impulse. And uh, the, the, opposite of the, the opposite of that is also true. So if you, um, send, if you give it an electrical shock, it will actually deform. And so we basically build a little tuning fork out of quartz, and then if we send a little electrical pulse into it, and it'll start vibrating. And every time it vibrates, it deforms, and we get an electrical pulse back. And due to the shape of the quartz, uh, we can um, basically manufacture them uh, we put little gold on them and use lasers to, you know, tune them uh, to be a specific frequency. And so we sort of, we give them a pulse, we get the response, we give them another pulse sort of to recharge them and then we get more response and we can build uh, timing circuits this way. And they're very accurate and they're uh, really cheap. Uh, and, you know, the most common frequency for real-time clocks is 32,768 hertz. Right? Because if you divide that by two enough times, you get one hertz once per second. And that's how most modern clocks work. Um, but unfortunately, back, uh, back when this was made, that wasn't really um, uh, the, the best option. Uh, so the way these things work is they use a synchronous motor, and a synchronous motor is a motor that spins um, with the frequency of the AC signal that's driving it. These are purely AC motors. And of course, mains in your country is probably either 50 or 60 hertz. It's 60 hertz where I am. And um, it's actually very accurate. Um, the, the drift is relatively, uh, relatively low because the power company maintains the frequency. Uh, that's, that's how they control the power output. It's actually the frequency that changes, not the voltage that changes. Um, and so this thing is actually, it, it keeps time basically by the frequency, the clock that comes through the mains basically. And uh, it's, you know, it's surprisingly accurate. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to win any awards for for uh, you know accuracy over like a you know like say a, like a year long time sp time span or something, but it's perfectly accurate for like a desk clock or, or something like that. Um, you know I'm not going to use the alarm on this. I just need something that I can see without my glasses on pretty much, and uh, that works fine. So uh, it's just you know mains comes in. Uh, just got some little crimp terminals here. This is the buzzer. Uh, it's not a speaker. It's actually just a metal plate with an electromagnet. Um, and they're just basically using this. It just makes a clacking noise. Uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll turn this thing on when uh, when I've got this replaced. There's just a little switch here, which is what the um, what the alarm set thing presses against, which turns this on and off. And then of course we've got the motor, the gearbox, and uh, the two wheels. And we've got the uh, the alarm set on this side. And then uh, yeah, I can sort of do this. It's kind of hard because the shaft is really small. Um, but uh, I've just got that. And it's, it's really simple. I mean, I, I'm not great at explaining this. There's lots and lots of videos probably about flip clocks, but uh, there's little, little uh, tabs at the top, which as the wheel rotates, eventually they flip down under their own weight. And uh, there's, there are these little tabs on the sides of these, which uh, flip over this, which hold this up until this tile flips. And it's, 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 it's quite interesting how these mechanisms are done, but not really important for the scope of this video. Uh, what I really care about though is, for, is this. This is the, uh, the neon lamp, um, which really doesn't look too good. I mean, that, uh, that does not look clear to me anymore. I mean, it's supposed to look like this. So uh, yeah, that, that lamp is uh, 
good and fucked. So uh, in here, there is going to be a resistor probably in that fiberglass sleeve there. So I'm going to see if I can get this out of the sleeve without cutting the sleeve because I don't, I'd rather keep the sleeve intact if I can, but I have heat shrink if I can't. So let me figure out how to open this and uh, I'll just solder this in. Uh, Leon, neons are really easy to drive off of the mains. That's kind of the reason why they, why they did this. Uh, they're low current, basically. You just need a resistor um, to limit the, uh, the current once it strikes. So it, they require high voltage to strike and then they're, uh, as they start to conduct, the sustaining voltage drops and then you just use a resistor um, to, to, to manage the striking and uh, running current of the, uh, of the neon. These are really high brightness neons that I bought because I want this to be um, pretty bright. It's not just an indicator neon. I want this to actually work kind of like a light. So um, the lifespan of this is, I think it's like 20,000 hours or... Anyway, uh, let me get this apart and uh, install this and uh, I'll fire it up. So I've managed to get the, uh, all of the sleevings off without cutting them, which is quite impressive. Uh, what's also really interesting is that they haven't uh, soldered any of these joints. They're all just crimped, which is uh, kind of nice to see because this, this is going to get hot. So um, it's, 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 it's a nice to see this kind of workmanship. And anyway, so they've got a, a 33K resistor in here. And uh, the neon that I have is a high, high current neon. So I, uh, I actually ordered uh, these uh, 22K. And what's really interesting is the package style is almost identical, um, which is uh, really interesting because the ones I ordered are kind of weird package style. So it's kind of weird to see that. But uh, yeah, I should be able to just uh, cut this out of here. Okay, so it's all been replaced. So I've taken out the, uh, the old neon and I uh, just cut the wires off. I actually did a test with the uh, 33K with versus the 22K and it strikes fine and it looks exactly the same brightness on 33K. So I'm actually gonna leave the, uh, I left the original resistor in here just because, um, you know, it's, it's ultimately the current that's gonna kill this. So if I can reduce the current and, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it'll technically, it'll get dimmer a little bit earlier, but um, it probably, I think realistically speaking, the lamp will probably last longer with the higher resistor. So I just left it in there, soldered it on and uh, well, we'll, just put this in and I will show you what it looks like. I really do kind of like their, their, their holder for this. They've got a little, a little hole cut for the, the pip on the top of the neon. Now, unfortunately the neon tube that I have, the pip is a little bit too big to actually fit all the way into the hole, but it's a nice way to anchor it. And they've just got this little metal clip that goes down over top of it here. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's, I mean, it's, it's just super simple, but it's uh, really quite nice. So if I get under my desk here and plug it in. So there you go. You can see the neon happily glowing there. And that should provide uh, you know, enough illumination to see the digits at night. And uh, you can also see the, uh, the motor spinning now. And uh, of course, this is all mains, so I don't really want to go poking around. But uh, let me put the cover back on. And uh, yeah, you can see what it looks like uh, with the window on. I, th I suspect it'll look a lot better without all the, uh, the ambient light on it. But uh, that's a much, much nicer looking neon than uh, what was in there before. So it goes to show, I mean, really um, anything with a neon in it, there you go, it flipped. So anything with a neon in it, you can easily change the neon. It doesn't take too long. And you know, you can extend the life of uh, your device. I mean, neons are used in a lot of main stuff. Like if you have like a power strip or uh, maybe like a, a wall, out, like a wall uh, light dimmer, and uh, you know, it, like it glows at night or whatever. Um, they usually have neons in them, um, like in the switch. And if you've ever seen those things start to flicker, it's because the neon has um, has gotten to the point where it can no longer strike properly, and you start to see it, uh, you know, striking and then. Uh, uh, it goes into this sort of oscillation, uh, and and that's why um, they do that. It's just because they've got neons in them, and they've all they've all eventually done this. And so you can fix them if you really care. So here it is, all back together. You can see the uh, neon glowing in there, and uh, it's uh, it's running. So just so you can hear what the buzzer sounds like, it's just 60 hertz tone basically, because uh, <laughs> there's no sound generator in this.
So uh, that's uh, I guess that would wake you up in the morning. So I'm not going to use that. Of course, I use my phone for uh, as an alarm clock. But uh, like I said, it's uh, it's kind of a cool novelty thing that still does have some use. Um, you know, just like Nixie clocks. I mean, even though Nixie tubes, it's kind of ironic. You know, Nixie tubes were never used for as clocks because they were just too expensive. It just didn't make sense. But, you know, nowadays that's, you know, literally decades after they've uh, been discontinued and are no longer manufactured, pretty much everyone buys them to build a clock with it. Like, I mean, I did. I, I, I built a, a Nixie clock. There's a video on it, um, you know, back probably like a year at least. But uh, anyway, that, that one was only a single digit because I only had one tube. So it's kind of not practical as a real clock. So that's why I got this one. But anyway, um, there wasn't really that much substance to this video. Uh, I really just kind of wanted to show off the clock. So anyway, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you were entertained. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.